Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another hopefully great video. Yeah, because today you join us. Well, it was actually a few weeks ago. I recorded this once and the sound was awful when we were out there. So recording again. But yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we headed out of London to go and look at potentially moving out of London to a new part of the country. So I thought it'd be fun to get loads of your questions in as well and answer them as we have a little bit of a run all around. This is sort of West Berkshire and Wiltshire region of the UK. So sit back, relax, and get through loads of your questions now with a big bumper pack video with lots of hit tips, tricks, and all sorts of things to help you become a better owner. Oh, and before we start, loads of new merch is now on the website. So yeah, click the link down below and check it out. Right, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one, guys. We'll see you out on the trails in a bit. Right, guys, so welcome to Wiltshire. And yeah, out on the run. It's, today's run is about 24k, 23-24k with about 420-ish metres of climbing, so pretty hilly. <laughs> we'll see you after about 4 or 5k or so, and we'll start answering some of your questions. Okay, so I put this out on Instagram a couple of hours ago just asking for some questions. So this is the first time I'm reading these now as well. So yeah, thank you very much. If you submitted a question, I'm just gonna go through a few, through a few of them, just quite, quite candidly really. And yeah, have a bit of a chat. So first things first, what do we got here? Elliot, which medal are you most proud of and what's your favorite appearance? It's always easy to choose your PBs and things because that's the days that went well, but something like Ultra Trail Cape Town, that video, if you've seen that, really had to dig so deep during that race. So that's maybe the proudest of getting through something, or maybe something like Geneva Marathon, ran, or ran a PB of 2.36 a week after finishing a 100 mile race. And that hurt a lot, and they, one, those ones where it really hurts, um, you've got to say. Um, what do you do with your used running shoes on Boudin Quad a Collection? Um, I'll put a link on the screen now, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, me and Sarah like to post them off to, I think they're called Rerun. They collect a lot of uh, secondhand shoes and post them off all around the world. Um, how did you start your coaching business any tips on how to start finding clients? Going out, getting your qualifications has got to be the first sort of thing to do. Look up England Athletics, if you're based in England or Scottish Athletics or Irish Athletics or wherever your local thing is around the world, go on some courses and find out if it's the sort of thing you want to do. And then finding clients, well, social media. Um, most of the people that get in touch with us, I mean, our wait list is up about 150 people now. It's, it's crazy. Like we're very, very privileged um, to have that many people interested in what we do. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people that do struggle a little about there. So we try and sort of send people off to others. But yeah, not an easy thing to break into. So you really got to find out whether you want to be doing it. Right, I better start running, otherwise I'm not going to have to uh, finish the running time. Uh, so I'm using one of your marathon training plans but I've got a trail, hilly, basically hilly trail right? How to use a marathon plan to train for a hilly ultra. Well, you've got to spend your time, as much time on the course as you can. If you live in a flat area, then treadmill has got to be your friend. Get in the gym, do some hilly runs on that. And yeah, try and do some hero repeats. Um, there's nothing really, there's no way to get around it. Spending time on the course, if you can get near your course, near the course for the race. Um, use the stepper, if you've got stepper in the gym. Uh, stairs at home. You've just got to find elevation um, and get strong and get used to the battering that it's going to take, basically. Dan, and he asks, you're into golf? Yeah, I am. Uh, what other sports are you into? Well, I don't really do anything else at the moment other than running, but in terms of other things I follow, it's mainly motorsport, really. So, like, I've been to the Le Mans 24-hour race 15 times now. I've made that annual sort of pilgrimage down there to La Salle just outside of Paris for the 24 hour car race. I really like my drag racing, like top fuel drag racing at Santa Pod. Go there a little bit. NASCAR, I'd love to go to the Daytona 500, things like that. I've been to uh, Indianapolis before and it's just amazing. Just love all these type of types of motorsport. Right, Izzy asked, do I think I'll ever move out of London? And if so, where? So yes, we will move out of London um, for two real reasons. One, I can't really afford it anymore, to be honest. London is very expensive. The mortgage on the flat, is very expensive and doing what we do 
is not conducive to paying that sort of thing. When I had a corporate job, you know, I didn't earn a lot of money, but it was all right. And it was the flat, bought the flat when I had the job. And now doing what we do, we don't earn a lot of money. We do it because we love it, not because we're going to become millionaires. So. And also we just want a bit more space out in, the, out in the hills, a bit more fresh air. Right, Matt asked about favorite running socks. All my socks come from Stance, not sponsored by them on their website. They just work really well for me. All socks, casual running come from Stance. Needham Runner asks, would I represent, represent England at Masters level? Well, I'd like to think so. It's probably a few years away yet, but yeah, it'd be cool to represent yeah, England singlet for something like that. Right guys, so yeah, we've meet, met the uh, Ridge Way basically now. Beautiful hills and rolling land out in front of us. Just a glorious place to be, about halfway through the run. Yeah, enjoying this, loving this so much. Right, on to the next question. So Paul asks, how do I know if I'm pushing myself too hard in training or not hard enough? Well, Paul, I do get, oh, no, we're going the right way. Uh, I get a blood test about once every three or four months and just check I'm all in shape and looking for like ferritin, iron levels, stuff like that and lots of like inflammation markers. Um, I'll link to my video down below. But yeah, just sort of general fatigue. Am I really tired when I get up in the morning? My muscles still aching because they're not recovering from the runs the day before. And yeah, then I'll just, if I do just feel really down, I don't want to go out the door for a run, things like that then yeah, I'll take a rest day. If I'm not training hard enough, no, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> I'm running pretty much every day at the moment, probably about two rest days a month is what I'm on at the moment. And I just take those, yeah, just when I'm just feeling like I just need a rest or I've just got too much to work on. All right, Will asks, what's my favorite session, a track session, long run, progression, etc. I'm really loving my progression runs at the moment, but a long run progression run. So for me, that's sort of about 10K easy pace, so low heart rate running. And then I'll start to knock it down, starting at about four minute Ks, going down to about three 20 minute Ks. Um, or the, yeah, so the 20th K will be that. And just every K faster than the one before, just clicking it up. Really helps for all sorts of endurance training getting your legs working hard at the back end of a long run. So yeah, put it into your next week on, plan it into your runs. Next one, how am I finding the Nike Tempes? Uh, yeah, absolutely love them to be perfectly honest. I have made a review. Um, it might have been up before this video, I don't know. But yeah, really, really enjoying the shoe. They're not perfect. They have got a lot of negative stick online, some of which, we're, some of which I kind of agree with and which I don't really know where people are coming from. But that's the thing with running shoes. It's so hard to review them because everyone's feet are so different, really. What works for me might work really well for somebody else or, or not. But for me, yeah, the Nike Tempos really helped my running. Just got my second pair in, the Mango Oranges, and looking forward to carrying on with them. Quick thing, if you are a heel, bit of a heel striker, then definitely avoid the shoe. If a midfoot striker, like myself, yeah, could work well. Jacob asks, how do you get sponsored? by brands or gain influence as a student runner? Well, I'm not really the best to ask because I don't have any sponsors on purpose, don't want any. I want to remain completely impartial and give you guys just complete honesty about the kit I'm using rather than like hashtag ad and gifted and all of that rubbish. But anyway, it suits some people. So I'm not knocking people that want to do it at all. But yeah, no brand is gonna sponsor you without a big, social media following they just want your audience at the end of the day they want to give you stuff that you can tell people and it will help them make more money uh, it's as simple as that so if you don't have a, a following on Instagram or YouTube they're not really gonna look at you so yeah you've got to build up a social media following and that's hard work I always did it by providing people useful sensible easy to understand advice and it's taken me about four years to get to where I am today uh, to try and make this my living, which is what we're doing at the moment. Not a running question, but do you still play golf? And if so, what's your handicap? I haven't played golf for about three, four years. I do live next to one of the biggest driving ranges in the country, so I keep meaning to go down there and play. What's my handicap now? Probably about 18, but I did get down. 
to scratch when I was younger. How many times a week strength and conditioning? Um, it's a, probably about five times a week, just little and often. Still rehabbing the ankle, which is taking a long time to get better. So yeah, that's definitely not gun, just because you see me running all the time. Um, yeah, still doing a lot of it. But yeah, about five times a week for about 20 to 25 minutes. One of the new t-shirts, hoodies out. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, they're on the website now, so go and check them out. How do you always find the motivation to run and exercise in general? Um, yeah, it is difficult. I, I only ever listen to, I, I get really into my podcasts, and so I only listen to podcasts when I go out for running. So to listen, to catch up with my podcasts, I have to go out for a run. So I use that as a little sort of trick. Um, but yeah, I just love it. I just love it. I really, I can't really get much of that. I just love getting out the door every day. I want to get better. I want to improve. I want to stay healthy. I want to look after myself. And that comes from running. So um, yeah, all the sort of things of like putting your clothes at the end of the bed or sleeping in your running clothes. I mean, I don't do any of that. It's some people, it helps with some people. But yeah, I just want to look after myself and, I, and, and be the best version I can. Create content for you guys and become a better, faster runner. So that's, yeah, it's just how bad do you want it? That sort of thing. I want it a lot. <laughs> so I could have got and trade. Top five book suggestions. Um, I'll put them up on the screen somewhere here now. Uh, yeah, have a look through there. Got a massive bookshelf, really enjoy my reading. Best sessions for running your 5K, best 5K. Uh, do something like uh, five by 1K with a two minute recovery at your goal 5K pace uh, and just sort of break it out. So if you want to break 20 minutes for a 5K, do five by 1K at four minute kilometer pace. Um, with a two minute recovery and just get used to running at that pace. And then um, you can sort of shorten the recoveries week by week. So then maybe go down to like 90 seconds, then go down to a minute the week after, then go down to 30 seconds. And then when it comes to that final week, you'll be doing your 5K at your 5K pace. Your relatively massively mileage each week depend on your recovery tools well yeah like i have a weekly massage from jc in my opinion still nothing is better no recovery gadget ever comes close to a human what a human can do to feel your legs and to massage out issues and to sort of help you recover that way so yeah without doubt you have all the tools in the world but you can't beat a human but yeah the air relax leg compression system is very good the uh, narrow gun massage gun i've got equally very good as well but you've got to use these things the r8 roller they're all good but you've got to use them so yeah i'd always say if you can afford it then definitely get a massage for recovery it's the best thing you can do if you can't afford it you want to spend a bit of money on gadgets yeah something like that roller that r8 roller is really good or just my tiger tail is another good little bit of kit to use right guys we've got about 5k to go oh lovely cows yeah how nice do they look lovely being out in the countryside about 5k to go now and yeah as i like to do once i like these trail runs just pick up the pace a little bit and a little bit earlier like i said with the progressive just get working hard in the long run get those legs working so yeah we're going to drop the pace down now give yourself an average goal through about 506 kilometer pace at the moment see if we can get under fives by the end of the run Right guys, just finishing up the run in Marlborough, just going down the main high street, I suppose. Yeah, it's going to be, I'll put the final stats up on the screen, but it was about, it was about 22k, with, yeah, I'd say about 450 metres of climb. So yeah, really nice to be out in Wiltshire. Hello to all the people that follow the channel from this beautiful neck of the woods. Right guys, we're now just outside the Nags Head, but not that one in Peckham. We're still out here. We're now in Oxfordshire, actually. Uh, yeah, Abingdon. If anyone's done the Thames Fast 100 mile, it's a station just there, nine miles to go deep into the Thames Fast 100. Anyway, let's ask a few more questions, answer a few more of your questions. If you can give a runner one piece of advice, what would it be and why? Learning to run at different paces, I'd say. So yeah, a lot of people when they first start running, they just run at one pace everywhere. So learn what your easy pace is. 
sort of steady pace, tempo pace, interval pace, anyone that downloads, you can download our pacing chart down below, I'll put it down there. Yeah, just learning to run at different paces. Like my PB marathon pace is 3.25 a K, today's run was all about five minute Ks, a little bit hilly. But yeah, learning to run, have that sort of different range, you'll make some really big improvements if you learn to run at different things, training different energy systems in the body, and yeah, just getting used to what it feels like to run at different intensities. Ben, what are the best recovery boots you have used and have? I've only used these uh, Air Relax, which I bought from Air Relax directly. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. They certainly seem to help me. I like them because I can just sit there, read a book, do some work on my laptop, and just sit there and get on with it. They are expensive, all recovery boots are well, really they are stupidly overpriced what they are, but these are about 500 pounds. And yeah, I am using them probably around about two or three, maybe four times a week for about 45 minutes. Are you able to organize a social distance run for everybody and be a great motivator? I'd love to organize a social distance run very, very soon. And I will as soon as I can and I'm allowed to, and it's a sensible thing to do. We were talking about doing that at the start of this year. And I want to put on like a running camp for people and a connect, you know, back out with the community as soon as we can. So as soon as I can, we'll do something in London. And then as soon as we can have a running camp, maybe in the south of Spain or the south of France or something like that, then we will do that. Have I got any strength and mobility tips for ankle and joint? What works for you? Yeah, I haven't done a dedicated video. Go and check out Sandy Nypaver's video on her ankle strength. Um, yeah, I'll link to it down below or up here, or whatever. Um, yeah, just follow her through video. She's much better at making that sort of stuff than I am. And most of what I'm doing is in that video as well. So check that out. Garmin versus Apple Watch. Definitely a Garmin is gonna be a lot better if you're a dedicated runner. Apple Watch, if you're just a bit of a casual runner, you wanna go out, you know, maybe once or twice or three times a week, Apple Watch is probably gonna serve you fine. If you wanna get take your running a little bit more seriously, get a lot more data on your wrist, have a bat much longer last battery life, a Garmin watch or another dedicated brand out there is gonna be the way to go. Do I stretch after every run? And if so, what do I do? Uh, not really. I tend to come in, have a have a recovery shake, and then do some mass sort of yeah recovery shake like that. A little bit of a dance, um, and <laughs> and then get on my air relax or or some self massage. And I find that's a lot better than doing static stretching. So now I rarely do any static stretching. It's just all about self massage and the air relax. Any tips for building strength around the knee? Um, building up your quads, basically. So things like lunges, things like squats. And yeah, if you can start to add some weight to that sort of thing as well, yeah, that's gonna help strengthen up your knee. Gel for a marathon. Well, the gel that you've tried out in your training and doesn't give you any stomach issues, basically. Everybody is so different. For me, I use Morton gels. Most of the people that I see that use the Morton gels get on quite well with them. We used to use the cyst gels before, but yeah, just go, what I'd recommend, go onto a company like xmiles.co.uk here in the UK, and you can order a selection box, like a little trial pack of lots of different types of brands, and just use a few of them. They all taste different, they'll get different consistencies, and just find out what works well for you. In terms of performance-wise, they're kind of all much of a muchness, but I really like Morton because they don't really taste of anything. It's a bit of a gel, so you don't need you take it with water and you just take it when your timing's right. Underwear do I use? Uh, Runderwear basically. Uh, yeah, buy them for about £10 each and they're really good quality, last really well and keep everything in place on the run. With regards to the business, what is the long term goal? Well, I don't really know. We've, I've got, I want to really carry on with the hats. The hats are fantastic, they're really good quality product and I've really enjoyed developing them and making them as good as they are. But a lot of people see that as just like official sort of merchandise for someone to me, which is great and I love that. And I love the fact that you guys buy so many of the stuff from us, but we've sold thousands of things now. It's really, really good and the feedback's amazing. So yeah, we'll probably look to launch a dedicated hat range, not necessarily associated with me directly or not have my name plastered over anything. Make some really cool, get some funky designers involved in creating some really cool running hats for the future. So yeah, that's where I sort of see the long-term business. And yeah, we'll carry on making videos and we'll carry on traveling around and doing races and doing all the stuff that you see for as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long my body will last, but yeah, hopefully for a long, many, many years to come. If only you could run one distance the rest of your life. For me, it's the road marathon. I must have done about 85 or 90 road marathons now. It's what I love, it's a challenge, it's so difficult every single time, but you're living for that one moment when it goes right, and that just feels incredible. So yeah, incredibly tough distance. 
and yeah for me it's all about the road marathon so hopefully we'll get back to doing those very very soon on the channel so many midges out here best place to travel to for a running holiday well yeah not much of that at the moment but we love going to a place called Chamonix in the south of France we also love going south of Spain we love going to Gran Canaria um, and in the UK traveling to places like the Peak District the Lake District up into the highlands of Scotland just I mean it's mainly fueled by Sarah really because she loves getting out into the mountains up into the, getting some big elevation so yeah they're kind of places where we really like to go to I think if we could get on a plane tomorrow we'd love to head out to somewhere like Flagstaff or Boulder and catch up with some of our American friends as well um, but yeah anywhere where there's a bit of sun and a bit of few mountains and we'll be there Right guys, so that's the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've tried to get back to as many questions as I can, but we would be here all night and I've got to get to my dad's for dinner. Do you want to actually look? It's a lot nicer looking this way rather than the trees. Sarah, come and have a hug. The guys can see the lovely terms for half us. We've got to get to my dad's for dinner just over there. Yeah, it's been a day of traveling around, seeing all these amazing places, which is really nice. And thanks for joining us on the journey. As always, if you've got extra questions, let me know down below. We can put them into future videos to help you guys out. Yeah, thanks for the support with all the new gear. It's all on the website now, so you go and check it out. As if you want to use code YouTube to get yourself a wee discount, then enter it at, in at checkout. So that's it, guys. Thank you for supporting the Patreon. The, YouTube supporters here directly on the channel and that's it. I'm gonna go to some dinner. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope your running is going very well and me and Sarah will see you in the next one.